In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Balance Druid in Cata Classic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Your first pick might come as a surprise here because Worgen is actually the best race that you can pick as an Alliance Balance Druid. Now this is because of Dark Flight stacking with your dash. And this is gonna essentially allow you to kite any melee in the game and even out of range of most casters. The 1% crit from Viciousness is also a great bonus as well. Now Night Elf is still a great pick as it gives us access to Shadow Meld. Shadow Meld is extremely powerful on stealth classes as it effectively allows you to re-stealth instantly since you drop combat when melding. You can even use Shadow Mail to avoid incoming CC and immune projectiles coming at you. Now for Horde, your best option is gonna be Torrin. Torrin has access to War Stomp and it's gonna allow us to pair War Stomp with Cyclone. This can also be used as a re-stun to try and land a kill on an enemy. Troll is another viable option if you're wanting to play Horde. This provides a decent haste bonus from the Berserking talent that can be paired with our cooldowns. Now, while Horde does have some solid options, most Druids are going to find themselves on the Alliance playing either Worgen or Night Elf. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. This is the only build that you're going to be playing, and all of our talents are mandatory, so there's not going to be really any changes or flexible talent points. One of the more interesting talents that we have is actually Fuhrer, as this allows us to instantly Skull Bash when we go into cat form. We also get a small mana buff, which is nice to avoid going out of mana, and we only need two points in Alkin Frenzy, as the damage bonus is static for all ranks, with the proc chance only increasing slightly. You could consider dropping fur for an extra point in this talent in raided battlegrounds, but this is simply too good to drop in arena. Moonkin form is a bit different than its wrath counterpart, and it comes back even stronger. Now all party members get a haste bonus instead of critical strike, and you get a flat 10% damage bonus to all arcane and nature spells. This makes our signature form even stronger than before. So along with talents, the glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm as well. Now you'll have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone, but there are some minor adjustments you can make in the major glyphs, which we're gonna cover a bit later. Your first choice is Glyph of Star Surge. This is super important as it will reduce the cooldown of Starfall with every Star Surge you cast. Your second Prime Glyph is Insect Swarm, which increases the damage of one of your primary damage over time effects. Finally, we have Glyph of Moonfire, which increases the dot component of Moonfire. Your build will have the same three major glyphs, Barkskin, Monsoon, and Starfall. Glyph of Barkskin is key to your survival, as it makes it so that when Barkskin is activated, it reduces your chance to be crit. Glyph of Monsoon is a nice bonus as it reduces the cooldown on Typhoon by 3 seconds. Glyph of Starfall reduces the cooldown on your major offensive ability by 30 seconds. You do have the option of dropping Glyph of Monsoon for Glyph of Entangling Roots. This simply reduces the cast time on your roots so you can get this off more easily. Finally, our minor glyphs are actually pretty useful here. Glyph of Dash reduces the cooldown on Dash by 
This is one of our main movement abilities. Glyph of Mark of the Wild reduces the mana cost of this ability by 50%. Our final minor glyph is whatever you want to slot in. In this case, we placed Glyph of Unburdened Rebirth here, but there's honestly no other impactful glyphs and this can be useful outside of Arena. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Ready to go foraging in the forest? Well then, we better teach you all about those deadly wild mushrooms and their detonate effect. Now, although wild mushrooms may seem like a pretty pointless button, when combined with their 10 second detonate ability, they can become a powerful part of our kit. Now, this is largely because of the Earth and Moon talent, which makes all targets hit by the detonate take 8% increased spell damage from our entire team, as well as giving us a flat 2% spell power increase. And because of this debuff being so powerful, we're going to be looking to detonate a shroom at least once every 15 seconds, even on single target, as its other triggers of Wrath and Starfire are not part of our rotation. Now, other than using wild mushrooms for Earth and Moon, we can also use it on stacking targets for strong cleave damage. This is especially potent into melee cleaves, as we can apply an area of effect snare on both targets from the fungal growth talent, allowing us to get more damage on them and kite them in the process. Now, when doing this, it can also be a good idea to place more than one at a time for increased burst damage, which is particularly strong in Solar Eclipse for the added 25% damage bonus it provides. Now, as for our Fungal Growth Snare, this can also be beneficial against casters and healers, though, as by creating that snare zone on a pillar, we can prevent the enemy team from casting when they want to. You can see Moonfire Beam do this here, as he places a shroom on the pillar to get the Earth and Moon buff on the Hunter, which also ends up being a huge crowd control on the enemy priest afterwards as they struggle to waddle around the pillar, reducing their healing output on their team. So moving on, when using your wild mushrooms, make sure that you're trying to weave the mushroom placements between Moonfire Globals, or you're going to be dropping your Lunar Shower buff, losing a ton of mana and damage at the same time. And always remember that Mushroom's damage pale in significance to having your dots up. They're simply just a bonus for when you already have pressure rolling or you just need to kite. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You're going to want as much intellect as possible, and you're naturally going to acquire this through your gear. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 4% spell hit cap. Now, Keep in mind that you'll get some spell hit from Spirit thanks to the balance of power talent. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This will ensure that your spells do not miss. This is necessary to land clones. Then you'll want at least 3500 resilience, this will help ensure you can survive enemy kill attempts as you will be the primary kill target in most games. After that, you'll want haste. This increases the speed of our casts. Crit is after that. It is worse than haste, but it does help to build pressure in the matchup. Our lowest priority is mastery. This doesn't have much benefit as it only increases our damage during Eclipse compared to having an impact the entire match. So in Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP. Balanced Druid is one of the primary kill targets, so you should expect to be tunneled a lot. Your main pieces are going to be the Vicious Gladiator's Sanctuary set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Wormhide Helm, Spalders, Robes, and Leg Guards. In your hand slot, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Kodo Hide Gloves for the increased range on Cyclone and optimized stats. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion for our spell penetration. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Bindings of Meditation. Then you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Belt of Meditation in the waist slot. Finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Foot Guards of Alacrity in the boot slot. For your weapons, you'll be using Vicious Gladiator's Gavel in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Reprieve in your off hand. The Relic slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Salvation. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. 
for your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Cruelty and Accuracy. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity with the Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Dominance. You can drop the Badge of Dominance for Dark Moon Card Volcano if you want to absolutely pump on damage, but you will appreciate the extra resilience from the PvP trinket. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your stats, and in this case, we're going to be reforging extra stats to ensure that we get our hit cap and reforge anything else to haste. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it is going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House, where you're going to pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, so this is recommended by default. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Haste for your gloves, and Lava Walker or Haste on your boots. Lava Walker is a good alternative for the boots if you want the movement speed, as while it doesn't affect cat or travel form, it does increase your movement in Moonkin form. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak will be enchanted with Lightweave Embroidery. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Powerful Enchanted Spell Thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gemmed. For your Meta Socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. This will provide you with some intellect and increase the amount of damage that your Critical Strikes deal. In your Red Slots, you have a couple of options. We're going to recommend Willful Ember Topaz to max out on Resilience, but you could use Brilliant Inferno Rubies for more damage. In your blue slots, you'll use Veiled Demon's Eye if you're below hit cap, or once again, you could socket Brilliant Inferno Rubies for more damage. And then in yellow sockets, default to Mystic Amber Jewel for maximum resilience, or Willful Ember Topaz for more damage. Professions are going to matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices here. You'll want to go Jewel Crafting and Tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff, which provides a sizable increase to our damage. Now, this can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel Crafting is our second pick, and this allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. We're going to use the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more damage, but you do have the option of using Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience if you're struggling to survive. However, our current set has over 3,700 resilience, so you do have room for a little more damage. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative to jewel crafting. It technically is slightly less stats in Season 9, but it will be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro that you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you're going to want focus macros for Skull Bash, Entangling Roots, Hibernate, Cyclone, Solar Beam, and Fairy Fire. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Cyclone, Entangling Roots, Solar Beam, and Fairy Fire. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. In Kata, you can only bash in bear form, so you should have a macro that instantly swaps you into bear to use this ability. We also need one for Frenzied Regeneration. Finally, we have our Stampeding Roar macro that we can use to catch up to enemies that are kiting or kite ourselves. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.